as an HR professional, have you ever suggested that an employee work on improving their listening skills? If so, you've probably suggested that they attend some kind of communication skills training as well. But what if there were a quicker, more effective way to improve your listening skills? Today, we are speaking to people skills expert Eleanor Shakiba, where she's going to share her tips on that. Eleanor, you've taught thousands of people on the skills of active listening. Now, what's the best way that employees can actually learn this skill? Well, that's a really interesting question. Um, and often managers and HR practitioners think training is the way to go. And so they enroll the staff member in a seven hour course and send them off for the day. But when you look at the contents of that course, there might only be an hour to an hour and a half of time actually dedicated to active listening skills. And so what you really need to think through is, is that enough detail? And is there a more effective way of developing this skill set? And if the answer is that you really want them to develop only that one core skill, then perhaps you should be considering coaching as an option. Mm -hmm. And coaching is something that you as an HR practitioner can actually deliver in the workplace yourself. So it's not only time effective, it is also usually quite a cost effective solution to the problem as well. Okay, fantastic. So how would an HR professional go about actually coaching to improve listening skills? Well, the first thing is to get them to listen to you in talking about why they would want to learn how to listen. Um, often what happens with people who aren't good at listening is they go, why should I listen? They don't listen to me. So there's a whole range of objections that they're going to bring up. So you need to talk them through how they feel when they're listened to by other people and get them to see the benefits of listening. So some of the benefits that you might talk them through would be things like, well, if you listen, you're going to get information that's useful for helping to change the other person's mind. Mm -hmm. If you just start talking, you might talk from the wrong perspective. And often that's an argument that really works on people who don't listen. Another thing that you can try saying to them is listening helps people to think because while they're listening, they're shifting their perspective. So if you want to change someone's mind, the worst thing you can do is talk to them. What you need to do is reflect back what they've been saying and allow the person to talk. Okay, so how, are those called reflective statements? Yes, or empathic statements, okay. depending on where you've learned your listening skills. Okay, so how would you explain the process then of making these reflective statements? So you need to talk them through what they're listening for. And the idea here is to explain, you're not just listening to the words, you're listening to the whole person. You're listening to whether or not they're making eye contact. You're listening to whether they're fidgeting. You're listening to the tonality and you're listening to the words. So often when I teach this skill, I say, listen for the facts, but also listen for the feelings and then make a distinction and feed back what you pick up about the feeling states as well as the facts. That's great advice. And also, have you got a specific example that you can walk us through in, the, in this scenario? So you might have someone who's um, in conflict with a team member and they're really refusing to take on board the other person's perspective. So what you would do is say to them, well, tell me about the last um, conflict that you had with this person. What was said? And they'll tell you what the other person said and how stupid it was. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, let's take that as an example. If we were just to hold a mirror up and reflect back the content of what that person said, what are the facts? Oh, well, the facts are they've got stupid opinions about how to do this project. Okay, if we looked at just the facts, do you think that they would think it was a stupid opinion? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so what exactly did they say? They think that we should do X, Y, and Z in this project. Right. All right, and now, how did they feel? Well, they felt like they were right, even though they're not. Okay, how would you reflect that back? I know that you're very committed to this course of action, might be something that the staff member could say. Okay, fantastic. So how do you practice these micro skills? Well, this is where the dreaded role play word comes in. Um, I tend not to actually use that word with the employee because as soon as you do, they... It's red flag. Exactly. <laughs> so what you say is, I suggest we give it a rehearsal. Let's run through what you're going to do when you get back to work. Let's imagine a situation that you know is going to come up fairly soon where this person you're in conflict with is going to express an opinion. I'll pretend to be that person and I'm going to express my opinion. Now you have a go at reflecting back what I say. 
They may be slightly nervous at first, but eventually they get to the point where they relax into the exercise, and that's the point at which you start giving them feedback. So don't do that too early. Let them get into the rehearsal and the practice, and then gradually give them some micro skills feedback. That's fantastic, Ellen. Also, how can an HR practitioner go about determining whether training or one-on-one -on -one coaching is the best option for them? Well, um, on my website, I've actually got a questionnaire that you can fill in that helps you to assess the situation. So that's a very easy way to get that indication. Another thing to do is to look at the situation and decide Firstly, does the person need a more rounded set of skills, in which case training is probably more appropriate? And secondly, um, how much time do we have to actually work on this skill set? And what's our budget here? So if you're just wanting to work on the active listening skills and you want a very quick and effective way of getting some change, and you don't have a big budget, then you as an HR practitioner might consider doing the coaching yourself and that's a very quick, effective and usually cost effective way of going about building those skills. If it was a more complex situation, you might want to refer the staff member to an external coach like myself or if it was a situation where you're wanting the person to really develop those interpersonal skills, you might send them to something like conflict management training, communication skills training, or assertiveness training. That's fantastic. And you mentioned that the website has a questionnaire that will help you determine those needs if required. That's correct. Eleanor, thank you so much once again. It's been another instructive conversation. It's been great to chat to you, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you next month. What's the topic? Next month is an issue that comes up a lot in HR, how to deal with aggressive behaviour at work.